Mud Panzer traffic, runway 35 left, rocket to Dodge Runway 5 on top of. Benson traffic, Alpine 101, Yankee Gate 610, push and start, no space to the east, Mountain Benson traffic.
Good evening, friends, followers, and channel members. Happy Friday! Oh, Friday night flights. Always good fun. Who knows, we may have a Friday night quiz as well. On an actual Friday, which will be a turn up for the books. Oh, hope everyone's had a great week. Looking forward to a good weekend as, uh, as well. And for the first time in a long time, we're in... Uh, we're in Italy today, an all-Italian affair this uh, this evening. We're heading down from um, Milan to uh, to Palermo, and we are, of course, on Vatsim. Though sadly, no ATC. Certainly not at uh, at the moment. We'll keep an eye on that just in case it uh, it changes, but nothing at the moment. Uh, so good evening to everyone. Hope you are well. Thank you for coming and joining us today. Uh, Cloud Gaming, why do I fly EasyJet? Just because I'm familiar with their SOPs and it means that we can do things realistically. Um, Barry, Dark, good to see you, mates. And Terry, Allen has been waiting for the evening drug ever since this morning. <laughs> Squiggly, it's 3 p.m. where you are. You may actually be able to get a whole stream in. Uh, phone better not ring and email better not ping. Well, absolutely right. If um, if you turn the, f take t turn the phone off and... Uh, close the, uh, the email program, you shouldn't have a problem. Uh, Barry, you've been a member for eight months. Wow, you completed your first flights on Vatsim this week. First one wasn't too great, but this morning's was. You think you're now hooked. Oh, Barry, that's great to hear. Thank you so much for being a, uh, being a channel member for eight months. Really do appreciate that support. And uh, to th the fact that you've uh, now got hooked on Vatsim is even better news. Once uh, I think it's one of those, once you've done it and experienced it, it's hard to fly without the beauty of Vatsim, isn't it? Uh, Lander Lakes, hello, Pilot uh, Pat, good evening to you, Colonel 22. Uh, Nobrix, hello to you as well, Sarah Teef, good evening. Uh, Danny Rubble, good evening, mate. Oh, that's better. I recognise your name now, Danny. <laughs> good to have you on board, FBS Ramers. I uh, hope, uh, hope you're all well. Uh, Frank WG Abbott, hello to you as well. Christopher Shaw, thanks for coming on board. My apologies as always if I have missed anybody. Anyway, it's quite a lengthy flight today. One hour, 30 minutes flight time, so we're going to hop on. Otherwise, the stream's going to be a late one, but it does mean we've got plenty of time to chat during the cruise, etc. So, as per usual, if there are any ba major uh, questions anyone wants to ask, then uh, we'll do that once we're, at our, uh, once we're airborne. Uh, the operational flight plan is already in the chat for those of you watching on YouTube. So go ahead and uh, go ahead and grab uh, grab that. Uh, let's get on board, shall we? So we've got our aircraft in a nice turnaround state. As you can see, everything is all lit up and waiting for us. Uh, we're going to get the uh, APU running, then we can start getting those passengers on board. One, two, three. There we are. Right, so the AP, uh, the APU, the OFP even, let me just link those. Current QNH is 1016, as I said, there's no ATC. Um, operational flight plan, so a <coughs> quick, uh, quick look through this, should be a nice calm flight. A little tailwind as well to help us along. Five and a half tons, or just over, is the plug fuel. Um, and if we go and have a little look at what's going on with regards to uh, our arrival, we can see the, um, well actually, uh, ceiling 2,000 feet. Visibility is meant to be a little bit less, uh, according to this. Having said that, this flight plan was created a couple of hours ago, so it may be slightly off. Uh, we'll obviously get uh, real world meta uh, in a moment. But if we just have a look at what's happening with regards to um, our destination weather, it's kind of okay. Yeah, Cav, okay. There is a potential, though. Look at those gusts. Uh, there is a potential for the wind to really get up this evening. So, we need to uh, we need to prepare for that. Little uh, island gusts off the sea. So, let's go back and... Uh, well actually, just before we do that, I will just show the Sigma charts as well. Uh, do, 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 do. Here we go. So, there's our route. This Open evening, traffic, Alpine 101, Yankee, uh, uh, traffic, nothing left. shown By a tango there, kilo, uh, with and the just the wind. So aside from the wind, we shouldn't have any uh, any major issues. Brian Dyer, thank you so much for upgrading your membership to training captain membership. Brian, thank you so much for that. Brian, if um, if you want already, make sure you get yourself in the VIP room on our Discord channel as well. Lots of extra perks in there for you, including access to the performance calculator as well, if you haven't already got that. Uh, and access to the uh, 
briefing videos that we do for uh, for our flights. Thanks so much, Brian. Really do uh, really do appreciate that. Uh, and Lucas, you're flying with us for the first time as well tonight. Excellent. Looking forward to uh, looking forward to that. Right back to our fuel. What we're going to take. Uh, well, given the potential for those winds getting up quite gusty as well, although there is the benefit of uh, all four different runways at uh, Palmera where we're headed. Mind you, we can only uh, use three of them because uh, we're not allowed to use one at night. So let's take an extra turn. Yeah, five and a half, uh, sorry, six and a half turns, please. Refuelers. So let's go ahead and get that going. There we are. Uh, Brian, you're already in the VIP from the previous level. Oh, that's fair. I couldn't remember where you'd come, uh, wh which level you come from, Brian, but uh, really, your uh, upgrade is really appreciated. HD, not sure about that TAF. Yes, well, that's why we've just thrown some extra fuel on. Um, what was that wind again? Uh, it was... Da -da -da, was it gone? I'm now looking at my second screen. Uh <coughs> So, gusts up to 35. Gusts up to 35. You think it's odd? I did see on Windy today. Windy, the app? Windly? I forgot what it's called. Uh, but it was getting a bit gusty around there uh, as, the, as the evening went on. Anyway, that's now... Uh, fuel's now coming on board. APU's running. Let's get that APU master on as well. So, a quick check of everything. The overhead is uh, all good. We've got the current Q&H on the standby pedestal. Everything is where it should be. I did give it a quick check just prior to the stream starting. Um, our initial climb out today for the uh, departure. Do we have one actually given to us on the charts? I'm just checking this to see if we uh, if we do. Um, Flight level 110 at Robas seems good, so we'll uh, we'll pop that in. Flight level 110. So let's go ahead and set that. Um, oh, HD, your app says 15 knots maximum. There is a <laughs> Well, because the OFP was probably created, oh, now, it might be five, six hours ago, the TAF, I imagine, will, uh, will have changed. So <laughs> I'm just going with the uh, out-of-date information that I've got. Um, oh, Alex, welcome to the First Officers Club, Alex. Thank you so much for your, uh, your support of the channel. And Alex, of course, get yourself on our Discord server if you're not already, and we'll uh, drop us a message, and you'll uh, be welcomed into the, into the membership loud. So, uh, thank you so much for that, Alex. Very, very kind of you to support the channel. Right, let's go ahead. <coughs> and, uh, ah, Mantoga, good spot. The uh, the fuel pumps are on. They, of course, should be off for uh, refueling. Not sure why they're on, actually. That's interesting. Hmm. Anyway. How's the refueling going? We've still got another ton to put on board, so let's just quickly turn those off. Let's pretend they were off right, <laughs> right from the start. Um, it's been over a minute, so let's get the packs on. And let's tell the cabin crew they can start boarding the, uh, the passengers for our flight today. If self-loading cargo behaves itself, there we go. Okay, FCU is all set with all constraints on. Obviously, the panels are all uh, turned up and bright as they should be. Let's come down and look at setting up the box. Now, I'm going to try and position my camera here, so because now that I'm controlling this on the tablet, I do forget that you're not always seeing everything I'm doing. So, IRS... Uh, uh, no, not the GPS. Go back a page. IRS, we've got the three nav green. Aircraft status, we've got the leap engines, valid air excital. Okay, so let's get the uh, A cars up link requested. So our alternate tonight is. I've closed that down on my second screen. There we are. Uh, the alternate tonight is Lima India, Charlie Charlie. 
and the call sign. I like this call sign. So, EasyJet Europe, it is Alpine 423 Tango. Quite unusual on uh, that. Cost index of 4, flight level 390, minus 59. And the Tropo 36698. There we are. So the flight plan. So the flight plan today, we've actually got 3-5 left. Now this actually, this is a real flight route as well. This actually did depart runway 3-5 left, which is uh, what I've kind of based that on. Um, there's no ATC. Normally EasyJet would depart 3-5 uh, right, if I'm not mistaken, because they normally park at the Terminal 2. Uh, is it Terminal 2? Right at the north of the field. But again, strangely enough, this flight didn't. It departed from the main terminal uh, off to the west apron. So it departed runway 3-5 left. So we're just going to mimic that this evening. So 3-5 left, that is the Farrak 6 Alpha um, departure. And that is a transition via Rogos. Now I just need Up to traffic, find LP that. There it is. Yankee, uh, lining up for departure three, five, and then the arrival uh, will be... Well, I hoped it was going to be ILS. Is it not ILS? Is it lock only? That'll be interesting. Ah, okay. Well, funnily enough, I thought we'd got an ILS here for runway 20. Not quite sure why that isn't uh, shown. Um, but, all right. Well, should we just pretend that the glide slope's not uh, operational for some reason? Okay, ILS Zulu... 20, it's going to be a lock. 20 Zulu, and the star is the Giano 4 Bravo. And that will be in via colour. Flight time 1044 on there, distance 695, and I've also got a, uh, there's a big difference there in the, um, <coughs> in the distance on the operational flight plan. Uh, uh, HD, they don't usually land on runway 20. Again, they don't, but they have been doing all day today, which is why, uh, why we've gone, uh, why we've gone for that one. So, um, yeah, interesting. I've seen almost all the landings today have come in on uh, runway 20. Uh, we'll keep an eye on the weather. I'm happy to. I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to try it, and uh, you know, it'd be quite a nice as well to do something a little different uh, to the norm. But uh, yeah, runway 20 has been in use all day today, so that's going to be uh, that's going to be fun. But I do want to check this route because there's a, a huge discrepancy there uh, in miles. So let's go ahead and check that uh, check that out. Move up, up that to plan mode and just zoom out a little bit. Um, right. So that all looks correct. And then, did that just... What happened there? Oh, right. It's having me flying the same thing twice. That is... A bug with the experimental version, I'm guessing. Right, let me just be very careful here. So we don't delete the wrong thing. So that goes as far as Rubus. We've got Farrak and Rubus in twice there. So let's just clear that. We'll clear that. We'll clear that. Now oh, that's looking better. 579 and 559. Um. Uh, Chris Shaw, the operational flight plan does say 02, not 20. It is, I assure you, runway 20 that we're going to be landing on. I, c I can guarantee you it's going to be 20 we're going to be landing on. Um. We're also not allowed to land on zero two at night. So if we just also check out the uh, yes, so the arrival should be the Jano two Mike. Let's check that. 
ILS200 Zulu Journal 2 Mike. Uh, oh, I didn't put the Veer in. Can I go back and add that? Insert. Try again. See what this looks like. There we go. We can just see the yellow line drawing itself. There we are. That's the arrival I was hoping for. All uh, right. So we're happy with that. The red nav page. We're going to put my pencil in there. M M P. Mike Mike Papa. And then on the init B page, we've got a zero fuel weight of fifty four point three. A tripwind tailwind of two six. Fuel planning is four point seven. We've got six point four. And that gives a taste of weight of sixty point five. We'll just let the rest of the numbers crunch and the alternate is one point four. Yeah, so Simbrief not always giving the perfect details. So that's why we now have to scrutinise that with scrutinise that with the uh, Navigraph charts. But there we go, extra flight time of 39 minutes. Right, onto the performance page. Let's bring up the calculator. Well done. My pins of traffic up in 101 Yankee. We're very sorry. We're well clear of 35 left. Uh, have a good day. Okay, so LMIC. Departing runway 35 left. About how much people planning goes into the live streams? Quite a bit, to be honest. Um, particularly if it's an area or a runway that I'm not familiar with. If it's something like uh, in the UK, Gatwick, Manchester, Edinburgh, which I'm quite familiar with, then I'm I'm all right. Uh, it doesn't take too much uh, too much pre-planning. But if it's something like this, then I do want to check that the charts are correct with what Simbrief has given me and and everything like that. So yeah, there is there is some work goes in behind the scenes. I don't just fire the PC up and hope for the best. <laughs> not, not anymore. <laughs> um, right, so dry and anti ice will be off. That takeoff weight then was, what was it? Uh, 60.5, wasn't it? Is that right? 60.5. Let's call that, we're currently at 60.8, so let's call it that. 60.8. Eight. We're going to burn a bit in the taxi, but I'm not quite sure how accurate those uh, burn figures are. Uh, the CFG is currently 24.3, so that's forward. Take off thrust flex config 1. Packs will be off. And calculate. There we go. Nice long runway here at... Uh, Milan. So let's get all of that information in. V speeds are 146. Oh, 446. That'd be interesting. Uh, 146. 146. Oh, my fingers aren't working on the tablet today. 146. And 147. Transition altitude here, according to the chart is ta -ta -ta, where are you 6,000 feet all passengers now boarded <laughs> thrust reduction acceleration is 1688 hi Gavin all the passengers are on board and we're ready to go I'll bring you a cup of tea after we've taken off Okay, so the actual real-world thrust reduction acceleration uh, altitude figures is 1688. We've just not got that information yet into the uh, into the uh, performance calculators database, but that will be coming soon, along with the engine out procedure as well. So flaps one, and a flex of 70. Light aircraft tonight. There we go. A little bit too close to me. Maybe slow down a little bit. Oh, we could slow down just a little bit. Sure, probably a good idea. Uh, Jersey 441, slowing down. Yeah. <laughs> Greatly appreciated. <laughs> Not sure what's going on there on the chat, but uh, <laughs> it, it sounds very amicable, so that's good. 
Okay, so everything's now done. Let's get the uh, departure brief done. Uh, so, weather here currently in Milan. I think we can... I've not tried this. Can we actually get uh, a full meta here now? Um, for, uh, for Milan. Oh, yeah, there it is. Look. Um, okay, so... Just reading that. No significant clouds cover, but becoming foggy. Is it actually foggy out on the uh, on the field? Doesn't look too bad, um, but getting back in here in Milan's not going to be an issue. Should we have a problem? Just going to turn you to off for uh, a second. Yeah, so weather here becoming a little bit foggy, but nothing that would stop us getting back in here if we had to suddenly return to the airfield. Aircraft is the experimental version of the A32NX from Flybauer. No, no times to concern ourselves with. And uh, the threats, well, yes, terrain is the biggest threat around this uh, this airport. Uh, terrain and no actual controllers tonight, so we're just on Unicom. Uh, but if I just bring up our RNAV departure chart, we can see that we've obviously got quite a bit of terrain. We, uh, if we have an issue, we can't just keep flying straight or we're going to hit something. So terrain to the north and to the west of the airfield is going to be our, uh, our main threat this evening. And the minimum safe altitude around the uh, airport as we depart is 10,300 feet. That obviously drops off quite quickly once we pass the first waypoint of Farrakh down to 3,000 feet. Okay, let's talk about our actual uh, brief. So, we are parked stand 606, so just here. So we're going to push back and face south on Yankee. And then from there, we um, will taxi on to... Let me just bring up the full chart. From there, we'll taxi down on to... Is it Whiskey, I think it is? We just double check. Yes, yeah, so we'll go Yankee, Tango, Whiskey, and then from Whiskey, full length departure. Um, so we'll take full length all the way down to Golf Whiskey. Now, I could, this is something that's just recently been upgraded and added to the takeoff performance calculator. We can now do intersection departures. Um, let me just see if I can show you that. Uh, do, do, do. Hang on, if I go to the options, uh, full length runway, uh, this will allow you to use the section. So if we pop that there, uh, I was doing this a little bit earlier, so why isn't that showing? Um, do you want to enable the full? Yes, I do. I'm going to calculate that again. Well, that's annoying. I was testing this out earlier. I'm not quite sure, unless this uh, particular version hasn't been up. Dated, uh, but there is an intersection departure because because <laughs> I've seen it down it it displays down here so I don't know where that's gone sack the programmer I'll have to look into that but you can now actually enter the uh, the runway length yourself if you want to make an intersection departure uh, so that's something for the snag list but anyway we're not doing that anyway because uh, Milan wants to use full length for noise abatement purposes anyway right let's um, continue so we're going to depart uh, full length from we three five left. And then a slight turn once we're at 1,200 feet. Max speed of 210 knots. So we'll check the performance page in a moment. And then 220 knots at Nilab. So 210 knots. Let's check the characteristic speeds for the departure uh, performance page. Uh, oh, we can fly at green dot. 207. Uh, so that is a uh, that's a possibility for us today. We're going to go ahead and, uh, and set that. Oh, quick question actually, HD. Um, so green dot's 207, max is 210. Do you want us to fight green dot or can we pop that in at max 210? After that, of course, we can then uh, increase ever so slightly. At knee lab, of course, if we're over 10,000 feet by this point, then it doesn't matter, we can just uh, continue our, uh, our climb away and disregard the speed restrictions. Anyway, I'll just leave that there for, uh, for now. Just check what that looks like on the chart. Yeah, that looks nice. HD, my choice. Oh, thank you, sir. Well, in that case, we'll fly a green dot because we've got terrain and it'll get us up higher quicker, won't it? So let's set green dot speed. 
Uh, emergency brief, standard Airbus emergency uh, brief, but the engine out procedure here is non-standard, as you would imagine with the amount of terrain around us. So at three miles from Mike Mike Popper, we would need to make a left-hand turn to the Neelab hauling point, and oh, I, yeah, I should have this already in here. Uh, I did this earlier, but I don't know if importing the uh, stuff has cleared it. Oh, it has. Right, okay, let me just pop that back in. And that would be... 087. So, that would be our holding point. It's going to be great when the secondary flight plan comes in because I'll be able to actually pop that in as well. There we are. Right. I think we're about ready to uh, go. I'm just going to do a couple of checks and uh, then we'll start running some checklists. Right, let's run our before start checklist. So, cockpit preparation is all complete. Signs are on and auto it is. We've got three nav green. Fuel quantity is 6480. FMGS is set and altimeter is 1016760 six, feet. Let's call the ground clue. Just checking over the glare shield. We do actually have a ground crew tonight. Look at the reflections of the windows on top. I mean, this is a default airport. Does anyone know of a payware or a freeware airport for uh, Malpensa? I love this airport and I love flying to it, but it's just depressing in the simulator compared to all the handcrafted ones that we do have. Right, so final check. Have we got any ATC? Afraid not. Uh, just quickly Thank checking up the on the chat. Um, fly by wire lists the airframe in their Discord. That is uh, that is indeed correct. So standing by for pushback. Um, we'll get our pushback clearance uh, on Unicom. Let me just have a quick look outside to check what's going on around us. So our taxi route, we can actually see we're going to push back and it's going to be first left, second, uh, first left, first right, and then down there. Is that first left, first right? I am just going to have a quick check. Oh yes, it's not, it's the second right. We're going to continue down on Whiskey. Although, looking at where the aircraft are coming in, maybe we won't. Maybe we will continue down on Kilo. I think that would be uh, that would perhaps be wiser. Otherwise, we could arrive and uh, conflict with traffic that are departing on uh, on runway three five left. So, kilo it is. Malpensa traffic Alpine four two three Tango pushing back stand six zero six facing south. Traffic. 
cleared for start and push. Parking brakes set. Okay. Good on traffic. The uh, Jersey Q400. Got a little bit of grass for you today, but no uh, scratches in the face. <laughs> 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 Great stuff. Eastbirds Lee, my friend, it's been a while. Welcome. Welcome. Parking brakes are released. Commencing pushback. You can start the engines in sequence. It will start in the sequence. Close enough. Okay, back we go. Overhead paranoia check. There we are. Uh, engine will select to start. Starting engine one. Oh, HD, the bloody checklist. Windows and doors are closed and armed, as confirmed on the lower ECAM prior to the engine start. Beacon light is, of course, on. Phone is on silent, which is good because you're going to be ringing it in a moment. And parking brake is now released. On this Why do I keep forgetting that? I need to find a trigger for it. Showing the exit routes. And then has been trapped in the QP zero delta by Kilo Five and Whiskey checking three points. Brace. There are two emergency exits at the rear, four in the middle, and two at the front of the cabin. Floor lighting will guide you to an exit. Please be aware that your nearest exit may be behind you. In an emergency, leave all cabin baggage on board. Wow, that is just in a hurry. Your seatbelt is fastened, adjusted, and released as shown. It must be fastened when the seatbelt signs are on, and we recommend that you keep it fastened at all times. If the air supply fails, masks will drop from above you. Pull a mask towards you to start the oxygen. Put the mask over your nose and mouth. Hold in place with the strap. If we land on water, take the life jacket from under your seat. Put it over your head. Pass the tapes around your waist. Click together and pull the strap to adjust. Do not inflate it inside the aircraft. Starting engine 2. When outside, inflate by pulling the toggle. If it fails to inflate or needs topping up, blow into the tube. There is a light and whistle for attracting attention. We also carry flotation aids for children. Your tray table must now be stowed, armrest down, window blinds open, and seat belt fastened. We wish you a pleasant Ground. flight Startup with EasyJet. You may disconnect. Roger. Good engine start. Clear to disconnect. See you at the side. Have a good flight. Holding position waiting for the visual. Thank you and goodbye. Okay, off he goes. Close that down. Wait for engine number two to spool up. Uh, Christopher, you use the airport lights mod uh, to brighten up the default airport. Yeah, it does look a little uh, dark, doesn't it? Uh, Venzo Gaming Star on Twitch. I have the experimental version currently installed. There we go. So that engine mode selected to uh, normal and if you bleed off, what's the temperature? Plus three. Eh, I was just considering anti-ice if it was foggy, but I don't think it actually is. APU master off. And spoilers rudder. Flaps one. Set the trim. And after start checklist. Anti-ice is off. Ecam status is checked. Pitch trims 24.3. Rudder is zero. Flight controls check. Full left. Full right and neutral. Full up. Full down. Neutral. Rudder. Full right. Rudder. Full left. And neutral. Just going to confirm this taxi now. It's going to be Yankee, then Q 
tequila. No, it isn't. It's Yankee and then whiskey. I am going with whiskey. So it's going to be Yankee Tango whiskey. Milan, Malpensa traffic, Alpine 423 Tango, taxi now via Yankee Tango, whiskey to uh, holding point, runway 35 left. That is the problem with these airports. After start checklist is complete, now we can move. Yeah, a lot easier to see where you're taxiing at the handcrafted airports, isn't it? I feel like I need to put every single light we have on at these airports just to get an idea as to uh, to where we are. Flight attendants, please prepare for takeoff. So there are various parking stands there on the left. And now we're taking a left here. A few little stutters coming into the stream here. Which is also making it a little difficult to uh, control. Right, just looking at the... is it a Swiss Air? Right, we are going to take Kilo. And Milan Matapanja traffic, Alpine 423 Tango is now going to taxi via Kilo to Holy Point 35 left. Malpanda traffic, was there 15 whiskey line at runway 35 right? We can't even trust the signs because I'm not entirely sure. Oh no, this looks right. This is Kilo, so I think that's okay. Uh, Star Logo, the new performance uh, app is uh, working out really well. I haven't rolled off the end of a runway yet. Okay, so let's do our heads check. QNH 1016. Uh, so it's still going to be a Toga takeoff. Uh, no, not Toga. Flex, sorry. Flex 70. Takeoff. Alpine 389 Golf uh, radio check. Engine out procedure is non standard. It's going to be a left hand turn at three miles from Mac Mac Papa to the Neil holding point. Departure is the Farrak 6 Alpha. Stop five altitude five. is 1 1000. Copy, thank you. Oh, HD, meow. <laughs> I nearly rolled off the taxiways, though. Yeah, that's my bad steering. Land traffic. Alpine 351, taxi holding point, runway 35 left. My bad steering, combined with the fact that when panning around, Malpensa traffic, with the rudder doesn't five, work. Whiskey rolling on 35 right via the Telva 6 Lima departure. Just having a look where we are here. Oh, there we go. There's the end of the taxiway. Right, well, whilst we roll down this straight, let's do the before takeoff checklist to the line. So, flight controls have been checked. Departure briefing is confirmed. Flap setting is config 1. Uh, FMA and takeoff data 146 blue, 147 magenta, climb nav blue, 1FD2, 11,000 blue, flex 70. Transponder is set. ECAM memo takeoff no blue, flight bag is stowed. Alpenza traffic, Lufthansa 8, Equity Uniform established, INLS, runway 35, left, 140. So there's aircraft coming in 14 miles out. We should have plenty of time. Having said that, when did Dark depart? There he is. So, interestingly enough... 1-4 DME, that's fine. 
That's enough time for us to get on. As long as we're slick, we can get out of here. Still giving a two minute spacing and... Be out of the way before that traffic. Alpine to traffic, Alpine 423 Tango lining up runway 35 left. Nice displaced threshold for this runway. Quick check of that approach path. Can't see anything. Loving the strobes <laughs> reflecting off those trees there. Nine mile final, that's okay. So just wait 30 more seconds. <coughs> Actually, he's going a different way to us, so that's not going to cause us an issue. Let's get out of here. Mount Pencil Traffic, Alpine 423 Tango, rolling now, runway 35 left departure on the Forex 6 Alpha. Okay, before takeoff, check this blood line. Cabin secured engine mode selector is normal. TCAS TAA RA packs are off and anti ice is off. Just check that uh, TCAS. Did, is that turned? Yeah, it is now. Wasn't before. Thank God for checklists. Fifty percent in one. And set takeoff thrust. Man flex, SRS, runway. Checked. Up at the traffic left on the eight, a good unit from the onshore final on the three five left. Ooh, flex 70. We're using all of the runway. V1 and rotate. Nav? Nice early turn for us here. Autopilot 1 is engaged. Set climb thrust. Thrust climb, climb. Lots of stuttering which concerns me greatly. And S speed, flap zero, spoilers disarmed. We go to flight level one one zero. Lovely view of Milan tonight. Good sharp left hand turn coming up. We'll have a peek out the window in a second. Just wondering why I can't see all of the uh, PFD. Must have moved the viewing point somehow.
Get above 10,000 feet nice and quick, then those speed restrictions will be lifted. Cabin crew can be released. Sam Powell, hello! Welcome to the chat. And Eastbird, why don't you use the manage mode for the speed or run autopilot? Won't it hold 207 as um, you put it in the uh, in the McDo? Manage mode would hold the speed constraints, wouldn't it? It wouldn't hold green dot. It's pack two on. Yeah, pack two's on. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep your seatbelt fastened while the seatbelt sign is on. We recommend that you keep your seat on the toilets are located at each end of the cabin. Remember, coming up now, 10,000 feet. At so, any time. This includes now we'll pop that into manage mode. We'll also, continue our climb. Just continue that in open climb for the moment. So, thrust climb, open climb, flight level 200. Zero, zero. We'll check our performance page to see if we can, uh, sorry, our progress page, see if we can go to our cruise, which is flight level 390. So, 390 blue. Uh, Gary, what do I click to release the cabin crew? It's just toggling the uh, no smoking bell sign. You sh I think they actually toggle the sea bell signs on and off, but if I do that, self-loading cargo plays two announcements, which is rather frustrating. HD giving a paranoia check. Wait, nothing wrong with those. <laughs> How many times have they saved us? Uh, Bruno, what about a flight over Brazil? I have started a sort of mini-series, not a mini-series, but occasionally we go on tour, don't we? We do a special. Um, we've done a USA special, we did a New Zealand special the other day, so there's plenty of scope to fly uh, around the world. Uh, so HD has just posed an interesting question. Um, 220 knots. Now, this is where you can either advise or get the ruler out HD. So, because we were above 10,000 feet, um, I believe that the constraints didn't apply by that point. We were above 10,000 feet, so I've knocked that into managed speed so we could just um, accelerate away. So, I'll wait for, uh, wait for your guidance on that. Happy to turn those seatbelt signs off now, though. Can we see Milan? Malpensa down there? Maybe not. Maybe as we've banked a little bit further. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has now turned off the seatbelt sign and you are now free to move around the cabin. We do recommend, however, when in your seat, that you keep your seatbelt fastened at all times in case of unexpected turbulence. The toilets are now available. Darina Kale, this is so nerdy. <laughs> Indeed. Welcome to the channel. Oh, right, okay, HD, I see you, uh, we were holding 2 to 0 above 10,000. I don't know if the stream was delayed, but I, um, <coughs> yeah, I may, I may have been about 500 feet late, but then I popped it into managed mode, but obviously with a stream delay, I, uh, I see what you're saying now. Sam Powell, thanks for subscribing. We can go ahead now. I'm happy that we can uh, clear out the Radnav page and pop the standby on standard. Oh, look at that. There's Milan, Malpensa down there, and it is flanked by a beautiful backdrop of the Alps. Um, 
<laughs> Chris Shaw says, surely the constraints are only a guide. Uh, well, a lot of the time, uh, ATC will clear you past them anyway. That looks beautiful. Night time, just as good as daytime here in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, Brian Brett, do I switch the packs off uh, just for the takeoff? That's correct. Give the engines a little bit more uh, performance. Shame we hadn't got any ATC tonight. That would have been uh, that would have been really nice. Seems uh, German airspace is alive, but uh, we've, we've been flying through that quite a bit recently, so I thought we'd go for somewhere a little bit different. Dark Fury, did that sentence make sense? Let me have a quick look. Oh, yeah, the flight description's wrong. The title's right. Let me edit that. There we go, that should have now changed. Right, so let's monitor her up to uh, our cruise flight mode. Dark, you should know where we are and where we're flying to, aren't you flying alongside us? <laughs> <laughs> I can see traffic edging ever closer behind us on the TCAS. There's Milan um, Lenate, isn't there? Just there. Is it Lenate? Uh, Alexandre, hello. So, what are the features currently included in the experimental version that have not been incorporated into the other ones? Okay, so better features of the LNAV, so um, the flight planning and uh, tracks that it flies, etc. Um, also, TCAS is is working. Peter Scarab, hello everyone. You're not late. It's a Friday night flight. We're just admiring the uh, the Alps from a distance, of course. Let's clear that uh, holding point out as well in the fixes page. There we go, go on. Uh, Bill Nicely, hello my friend, it's been a while Bill, hope you're well. Uh, tried to fly with you today, but get held up till now, next time. Uh, Christian, Lenate, and only a little bit left, your home base, nice. If you're there now, is it a little bit foggy outside? Sadly, it wasn't in the simulator. It wasn't wasn't too bad at all. Once we got to the top of the climb, of course, we'll do our flight checks and see what the weather's doing on our way down to Palmero. Alexandra says, excellent, we'll update mine for uh, uh, today for the weekend fun. Yeah, and it's not a massive download, is it? It only takes a couple of minutes, depending on your download internet speed, of course. Uh, 
Uh, Frank, can you use the experimental version without having to use the tiller mod? Yes, of course you can. Yeah, absolutely. You just don't uh, enable that function in the uh, in the flypad in the tablet. So it's completely optional if you want to use the uh, the tiller or not. I like the idea of the tiller, but I would need some rudder pedals to make that work correctly. Uh, Eastbirds, is there any idea when the weather radar will be functional again? <sighs> it's down to Zobo to open that side of things up, I'm afraid. <coughs> Hello, good evening. Alpine 423 Tango, Gavin. Uh, from all of us watching online, a very good evening and a nice flight. I <laughs> uh, hope you have a nice flight too, my friend. You can also send me a message as well on the uh, on the McDo now, can't you? If you've got the free text enabled, I can actually type back as well now. I don't mind doing it now. I've got it all on the tablet. I'm able to actually do that. Uh, that weird dude HD. <laughs> oh, oh, I love that username. <laughs> that weird dude HD. Um, any recommendations for flight recorders? Uh, the free one doesn't work. Uh, the, the, have you, are you talking about um, a, a replay mod? Because there's obviously one built into the simulator now, isn't there? <laughs> HD, I have fans. We're slowly edging closer and closer, aren't we? to um, slowly edging close to 20,000 20, subscribers, which is incredible. A huge thanks to each and every one of you who uh, have subscribed. Interestingly enough, I, uh, I don't think I've ever asked this question before, is there anybody who's watching the stream right now um, who has never sub uh, who ha hasn't subscribed? And you've just popped us on by mistake. <laughs> get, get involved. Send us a message in the chat. I would love to hear that. And uh, even more, uh, perhaps, <laughs> more importantly, I want to know, what on earth did you think you were clicking on? <laughs> oh, right, what are we? 33, 34,000 feet. leaving the Alps behind, which is good, means we're flying in the right direction. Uh, that weird do HD, where's the inbuilt flight recorder replay? You're trying to get some things uh, done for, uh, for YouTube. Uh, so in order to enable that, you need to enable the dev mode, developer mode, um, and then in one of the menus there you can enable the flight replay and then once you've done that it actually appears um, on this top bar there. Uh, there it is, the, the replay. It's grayed out at the moment because I haven't enabled the developer mode because it is still technically um, in the developer mode. So. <laughs> Hugo, was that you? Just said hello on uh, Unicom. I am very well, thank you. <laughs> I replied to you on stream, keeping it pro. Uh, HD, it's 3am and I'm watching some dude fly to a random place. I'm sure this applies to someone. <laughs> Anywhere that's six hours ahead of us. It is rather strange that there was no ILSs in the um, in the approach to uh, Palermo, isn't it? Not a single one. So that's a bit weird. 
Still, that'll be a decent test. Nicholas, good evening, and Blue Circle VIP, hello. Welcome on board. And look at that, company message. Let's check out the company message. Um, that's in our Atsu menu, our AOC, and receive messages from Alpine389 Golf, uh, who <laughs> simply writes, uh, test, test. Indeed, it does work. Carl B, good evening, sir. Happy Friday to you. With the sound of this music in the background, I feel like we should be going somewhere a little bit warmer. Uh, Christian, is it supposed to give out that red light on the wing? You don't recall seeing it when you're flying uh, with your A320. Um, I, th I think it's meant to be... Is that not the... Isn't the rotating beacon light that's reflecting off the top of the fuselage? Fly by wire got the double strobes in, didn't they? Uh, Nicholas View is Dubai, Frankfurt. That's a decent length flight. What's that? Five and a half, six hours? Can we actually see the uh, green navigation light on the other wing? Because they're on the ends, aren't they? On the, on the outside. If I head outside, might see those. Must be on the other side of the wingtip. Hang on. See, if ever you do this sort of thing in VR, you're going to feel very nauseous. Where are my nav lights? Oh, there it is. There you go. Ooh, that looks a little bit wobbly. And there we are, we just had our cruising altitude, so let's go TCAS set to below. HD, look over his window. Uh, look over our... Uh, oh, there you are. You can just see the trailing edge of the wing. an aircraft down there. I'm sure I just saw some strobe lights. Um, right, let me uh, do some top of climb checks. We'll also get a fuel check as well in, uh, in a second. <laughs> Luca Gotto, hi I'm Italian, welcome to Italy. Thank you. <laughs> There's some strange sounds on uh, Unicorn this evening. What on earth is going on there? Oh, we've got a spammer. We've got a spammer. Oh, what's the button? Dot wallop.
Hey Mark, uh, went to find this morning, find someone's doing all sorts of strange things. Oh, it was the Xbox Live was down this morning, wasn't it? Yeah. So that was, uh, that was strange. We're just checking this out. Milan Radar is now online, just a bit late. Right, where have you just passed? Uh, Iplob. How long have we been flying for? 23 minutes. That looked a little bit turbulent, didn't it? Uh, how much fuel did we take? We took s so we took 6.5 tons. So we should have. How much should we have? Uh, four, seven, eight, nine, four point nine tons. Oh, that worked out quite nice. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. So fuel is doing fine. Uh, Michel Cassie, I'm Italian too, and the flight route is taking you straight over your house. Oh, you're able to give us a wave. Uh, Dark Fury says, keep up the good job. You're keeping your zero-month-old entertained while watching you fly. Is that because I'm boring him to sleep? <laughs> oh, well. Uh, I, I did think when you put zero-month, I thought, I'm pretty certain he's a bit older than that now, isn't he? Uh, right, I believe we've got another message. Danny, is that from you again? Uh, messages received. Um, no different on this from Al Alpine 101 Yankee, who just simply says, Hello, Gav. There's no reply button. If I could just reply, that would be quite nice. Right, should we have a look at some weather en route? Let's see what we've got. Lots of uh, goings on on that seem tonight. So let's <coughs> check out some on route weathers. We'll have a look at. Obviously, we don't need Milan anymore. Lucas, was that you? Hello, mate. Thanks for the message. So we've got LICJ in the top. Uh, after that, we'll have a look at PISA, which is L-I-R-P. Uh, as we're heading down there, we'll also have a look at Rome. And I think Naples will be a good shout as well. Send that off. Oh, I am quite sad Milan uh, radar wasn't online when we were departing Milan. That would have been neat. Company message. What can we expect? Weather, weather, weather. Okay, so weather at our destination, wind 190 at 18. Yes, that's why runway 20 has been used today. A uh, little blustery, but runway 20 gets us uh, nicely in with uh, just a mostly headwind. Pisa has got 5 kilometers visibility, temporarily down to 3. Um, with mist and fog coming in. Rome. Great visibility. Rome's wide open. If we have an issue, Rome's a good spot to head to. And Naples. Uh, again, very light wind. 
and uh, no issues with regards to visibility either. Everything is good. I do like the views from the uh, from the windows. In just a few moments, we'll commence our in-flight service, offering you the chance to purchase a selection of hot beverages together with drinks and snacks from the bar. We accept payment in pounds, euros, most major currencies, and debit or credit cards. The correct change would be greatly appreciated. And if we can be of any further assistance, then just ask us as we join you in the cabin shortly. Uh, Mark says Palermo is where the landings took place in World War II, isn't it? I'm sorry, my history is rubbish. Someone better than me will be able to help you out with that, I'm, uh, I'm sure. Uh, as far as I'm going for runway 20 or 25, I'm going for runway 20. It's the one that's been used all day today in uh, in real life, so I see no reason why we uh, we shouldn't use it as uh, as well. Just wondering, as I look out there, how long that red tinge on the horizon would last for? Uh, Christian, what's the most turbulent flight you've ever flown? I think Microsoft Flight Simulator goes a little bit overboard if you're flying over the Alps or something daft like that. Um, it does tend to throw you up and down a, a little bit. Uh, Wally, on the departure brief, on behalf of myself and First Officer George, should be installed. Uh, got to keep the underlings happy. <laughs> oh, good old First Officer George. We love First Officer George. Not when he locks me in my blooming office, though, I don't. Which has happened on more than one occasion, I'm afraid to say. It's only a problem when I'm in the house on my own. Uh, Christian, you landed in Zurich yesterday having a nice roller coaster ride. What, coming in over the Alps? Yeah, I think it just needs to be tweaked a little bit, doesn't it? So just looking as well to see if I can see any other vats in traffic flying around. There doesn't seem to be too much going on in there. I keep thinking I've seen one, but then realise it's actually my own strobe light. So that, that doesn't count. Uh, Christopher Shaw, Los Angeles to Denver was yours. Throwing unrealistic 3G bumps. Ouch.
Uh, HD, you've had two proper turbulence moments that you can remember uh, that were bad. That bad it required the uh, cabin crew take your seats immediately. PA, not nice when you get it, and probably not nice for the passengers when they hear you telling the cabin crew to sit down because that. Uh, I guess you've got to be careful on how you deliver that address. You don't want to cause alarm, but at the same time, you need to get that message across. Kevin, we are watching you. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, as far as does anyone have any knowledge about whether I ILS plates etc uh, for the ILS but only uh, has uh, lock approaches in the uh, the McDo? Yeah, as far as we flagged this up right at the start, I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but um, but never mind. It'll make it a different uh, kind of approach, won't it, for a change? Uh, Nicholas, hello again. You were busy talking to air traffic control. Uh, flight from Dubai to Frankfurt, six and a half hours long for you, uh, with a headwind of 90 knots. <laughs> That's not going to help, is it? <laughs> uh, HD belts are on usually before that, but you immediate priority is preventing the crew from getting injured. There are a hardy bunch back there, fair play to them. And of course, if one of them gets injured, then uh, you've got an issue, of course. Uh, Lucas, you're on the experimental and you have the Alice 20 available. That is interesting. Which air act cycle do you have installed? Actually, a pretty good question that. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got the right one. Anyway, enough chat. Should we start talking about this? Uh, having a look at this arrival, which is going to be slightly different to the norm without any ILS. So we come in via Gango. Um, it's going to be the Gango 2 mic, I think that is. For runway 20. Or is it Giano? We're in Italia, aren't we? Giano 2 mic. For runway 20. And then we just have a nice little up, down, up, down, up, down. Which helps for spacing. Then that brings us in via collar, and collar then has us on what should... Well, do you know what is going to be interesting? We've got an ILS DME there. I want to pop that in the random page and actually see what we get. You never know. It may just be a simism. So, it could, uh, it could happen. It could happen. So we may yet still have a full ILS. If not, we'll do a, uh, a lock arrival. Which, of course, we can... Uh, we can work out with our... Uh, distances here when we're six miles out. This room is the Mafia stole the glide slope. <laughs> Maybe it's in up. <laughs> I have not checked those no times. Uh, I'm just having a quick scroll through. That'd be really funny if uh, if it was. Um, but just checking. Uh, Punta Razia. Uh, Taxiway Romeo between uh, Holding Point Romeo 5 and Hotel is closed. Approach procedures. Uh, Trapping NDB is unserviceable. <coughs> uh, 
180, oh this is interesting though, uh, for the ILS runway 20 and RNP runway 20, uh, IS max 180 knots at a distance of 9 miles and then 160 knots from 5 miles. Doesn't say anything about the Mafia steel and the Clyde Slope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Danny, how do you know if a control wants to contact you? They'll send you a little ping. So, uh, yeah. You'll know, because VPI will start flashing. Uh, false localizer captures may occur. I don't think that would happen in the sim. Right, well, the ILS then. Let's have a look. Uh, Christopher Shaw, no, you don't get it through Salcal. Salcal's selective calling used for uh, oceanic aircraft usually. Um, and other areas where there's no uh, radar coverage. So, let me see. Let's start populating the uh, box with information that we're going to be needing and using. Let's go to the Radnav page. We'll pop in Resi, which is Papa Romeo Sierra. So we've got uh, a VOR on there. Uh, oh, funnily enough, I've got um, I've got the ITO DME uh, ILS uh, identifier shown in there, so that'll be interesting to see if it does come up. Guess we'll have to wait and see, won't we? Let's see how we're going to handle this arrival. So interesting. Collar. How far away is Collar from the uh, arrival runway? It is 18 miles. Well, that's good to know because I'm thinking instead of doing all of this, we can get down to around about 5,000 feet at uh, CJ457. Green dot. Leave there. At green dot speed, pull flaps one, right hand turn, intercept the uh, ILS, or well not the ILS in this case, the localizer, and then pull flaps two, speed 180, and we'll get down to the uh, to the runway that way. So I'm going to shoot, or I'm going to plan to. Uh, I'll leave it fully in the box as it is at the moment, but. I'm going to plan to go uh, straight direct to Collar. If there does happen to be any traffic sort of in front of me doing the full procedure, then I'll not pull a nick and <laughs> I'll, I'll carry st and carry straight on. I will follow them, but for now, um, yeah, we're going to go. Uh, we're going to go direct Collar. Uh, so Alan shouts up uh, with a valid point, but the minimum safe altitude. Okay, so minimum safe altitude, yes, but we are on an actual approach and a route. You're right, technically I guess this little gap here, we're not on any particular approach or route, but we're also over the sea. So the 7700, whilst yes, is a valid point, it's more for the terrain that we've got, of course, to the south. Now, we've got to be very careful with this. Let's have a look then. So th let's start bringing threats uh, into our... Um <coughs> start bringing some threats in. So we have got the missed approach uh, point, which is, uh, which is just shown there. There's a few missed approach points, but latest is 0.2 miles. Oh, sorry, 0.8 miles from India Tango Oscar. So if things start to go wrong because we don't have the glide slope or for whatever reason I've not got the uh, the profile correct as we're going down, then the latest I could leave that is 0.8 miles. But to be fair, 0.8 miles. By then I should know if it's going to work or not. Um, the go around procedure as soon as possible. We turn right to intercept the 322 radial from uh, PRS VOR, climb to 3000 and proceed to the setup holding. So we can put all that information in as well. Main thing is we want to, uh, we just want to enter the uh, the holding at, uh, at setup. 
uh, HD is doing Nick will be synonymous with <laughs> that sim from here on it. <laughs> Everyone loves Nick. Uh, East Burs Lee says fans could take uh, could go and download and install the boat app and wait underneath the approach path and flash the lights. Mm. That is a cracking idea, but I wonder if it would actually work. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> Uh, right, what was I doing? Oh yeah, I was just going to build up a little picture of the um, go-around procedure. Uh, so, let's just pop in the Papa Romeo Sierra. Pop in that radial of 322. There's a couple there quite close to each other of... Uh, VORs called Papa Romeo Sierra, but we picked the right one because we checked it against the frequency. And then we're also just going to add in on the next page. It is Salap. Make sure we spell that correctly. S A L A P. There we go. So that's the missed approach, which is 3,000 feet. Transition altitude for our approach is 5,000 feet. Platform altitude <laughs> is 3,000 feet. Now, interesting to note this as well. So we want to be 3,000. If we're going to get this right, we could almost use FPA, couldn't we? We could do the RNAV approach, but I'll leave it as it is. Um, so, at um, 9.3 miles, we want to be 3,000 feet, and then on a 3 degree descent path. That should get us down nicely. Uh, Mr. V, that would be less bat sim and more yacht sim. <laughs> I'm sure there are people that can do it. So all I'm doing is, because it's going to be a slightly different procedure, actually, um, yeah, just looking at minimum safe altitudes there, it's, uh, it's not, it's 5,200 feet, isn't it, as we're coming in. Um, yeah, so all I'm doing is, because we're doing a slightly different uh, method of approach, because I'm not sure the glad slope's going to be working, uh, I'm just building up as much as I can as possible so we know 9.3 miles we're going to be at 3,000 feet a three degree descent from there and then we can just cross reference these with the uh, distance and altitudes that we need to be at Mr. Approach is now in uh, in the box decision altitude it's going to be uh, runway visual range is above 1.2 kilometers so it is going to be uh, okay here's a quick question I'm not gonna answer this guys what's the mist uh, what's the uh, decision altitude today I'll leave the chart up what's the decision altitude I'll let you answer it whilst you answer that I'm gonna have a quick drink In just a few moments, we'll commence our in-flight service, offering you the chance to purchase from our selection of fresh food available today. Full details can be found in your in-flight brochure. We accept payment in pounds, euros, most major currencies, and debit or credit cards. The correct change would be greatly appreciated, and if we can be of any further assistance, then just ask us as we join you in the cabin shortly.
Okay, I'm back and I'm just chuckling at the answer. Okay, by far the best answer to uh, <laughs> that question, what's the <laughs> decision altitude, is uh, <laughs> 428 without boats and 450 with boats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it is, it is uh, 4.50, so well done to everyone that got that. Mini Friday night quiz. As we're not using a glide slope, it's going to be 450. Uh, so actually the runway visual range as well is not 1200, it's 1600. All good stuff. And runway elevation is 22. After landing, then, we vacate to the right, I believe it is. Uh, it's not the longest runway in the world, actually. What is it? 2,068 meters. Um, so we'll either vacate via Fox or Golf. Uh, What's runway visual range? Yeah, 1600. As it's cav okay, it's just academic. That's right. Should have beautiful views of all the boats lined up just here. <laughs> uh, Doc, say, what's the difference between uh, C and D for the minimum? So it's the category of the aircraft. So the Airbus A320 is a category C aircraft, all based up in their uh, the VAP speeds their, uh, that they pass over the runway threshold at. Nice. So I just want to also check. Yeah. So <coughs> there's our arrival. Looking beautiful. We're obviously over the sea now. No lights as I look out. And there is our Mr. Approach stuff. HDS, a great question. What is one of the most unusual threats here? Besides birds hanging off the cliff edge. do have traffic. Oh, it's 40 miles away beneath us. Can't see any flashing lights. David, what is the name of the app for the uh, uh, the A320 Kaga? Well, it has got a name, actually. Um, it's called SimSmart. Uh, but it's still in beta, so not available uh, just yet. But, um, but yeah, it's uh, a great little piece of, uh, piece of software based on the real-world calculator as well. So, tr trying to keep everything as... Uh, as realistic as uh, as possible. <laughs> Christian, good evening. Italian Mafia, one of the big threats. <laughs> so the runway width isn't particularly narrow. It's only 45 meters. It's 45 meters, so uh, that's okay. The biggest threat is the um, the fact that uh, well, well, hang on, that's not what I was going for. Stray cattle may wander onto the runway. <laughs> okay, that wasn't what I was going for. I was going for the fact that you're landing in over the sea, so you've got no visual reference prior to the runway threshold. It's just going to be black at night, which is uh, a threat in itself. <laughs> Cattle may wander onto the runway. <laughs> wow. And if they do, do we have to give way? Or <laughs> do we have a barbecue? Uh, Sparrow David, n uh, no, it's not yet available. It will. I'm hoping within the next month the PC version will be, uh, 
will be released. So stay tuned to the channel for more information on uh, on that. The black hole effect. Thank you. That's the name. So our top of descent is going to begin around a hundred and ten miles away from uh, CJ four five seven. So I'm just popping that uh, in there as well. It's actually 112 miles away. We're going to begin that descent. We're not actually far from it. We've done all our briefing anyway. We know exactly what we're doing. Uh, Christian, there is also a nearby cliff. That is true. So we've got cattle on the runway, we've got birds nesting in the cliffs, we've got the black hole effect, and we've potentially got an out of service glide slope. It's going to be a fun approach. Stay tuned. Hey, Jay Hog, how are you doing? Shopping in Harrogate. Is she posh enough for that? Let's get the latest um, weather before my aunt kills me. Cows leave a decent dent. I, I imagine so, yes. Hey, Tally Johnson. Hope you're well. Mr. V, a cow strike is indeed more impressive than a bird strike. So we'll enter our destination data, and then we'll start our descent. 190 at 18. The visibility is cab OK, 17 degrees, lovely, and 1017. The Q&H. I'm going to get that into the perf page. And then we'll head down. I've got a horrible feeling I'm up early again in the morning for a children's party. That's just my life at the moment on weekends. There we go, all done, ready to go. Oh, Jayhawk, yes, you're feeling. Uh, <laughs> yes, so Jayhawk with your new RTX 3080 or whatever it's called. No wonder you felt the need to take the wife shopping today. Uh, flight Simulator Dreams, you make streams with, uh, with Microsoft Flight Simulator on Homemade Flight Sim. Great stuff. Full Homemade Flight Sims are re really good. Right, I need to head down. I seem to have got some traffic. How far out? Uh, oh, he's miles away. That's okay. Okay, we're going all the way down now, guys. We're going all the way down to... Well, do you know what? I'm going to pull 10,000 feet and then we'll uh, sort ourselves out from there. So. Let's head down flat level 110. Through side a little bit descent, 110 blue. Once again, you will be delighted to hear that we will shortly be starting our descent into our destination, at which point the cabin crew will start preparing for our arrival. If you could please make sure that all the hours are clear and the cabin crew are able to make their way around the Sure. 
Uh, message request as well from Whiskey6, or remind me which call sign that is, W6-1501. Um, going to be doing the full approach. I hope they're behind us. Oh, I like Tivat in the simulator. <laughs> I wouldn't be quite so keen in real life. The split visual on 2-3 is tough. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Runway 05 is much easier. Uh, j Hug, you could have got a 3090 for the price of the dress. Oh, well. <coughs> Think yourself lucky. At least you've only one daughter. I'm going to be so bankrupt in some years to come. Speed two seventy. Uh, Danny TCAS only currently works in the experimental build of the fly by wire. If that uh, that makes any difference to you, do you know what? I've just realised. I think I've done this entire flight without any of the dome light on. HD will be happy. Oh, Top Gun is the banner at the top, it's still not working again. It bugs out occasionally, I don't really know why. Uh, Barry, yeah, when they all get married on the same day. No, Barry, I'd be quite happy with that. I mean, I'm sure I can get a three for two deal or something for the vicar. And then it's only one venue, one big venue. I'll just make sure they've all got the same friends as well. Eastbirds, you'd sell your house to purchase an A320 home cockpit. Sadly, the landlord you pay rent to wouldn't let you. <laughs> I think I would as well. It'd be much more peaceful than in my house. <laughs> Christopher, you're used to not having a dome light now. So I'm just popping in the progress page as well down here. Uh, that waypoint which I'm sort of targeting, which is Charlie Juliet 457. That way I can monitor the profile as we go down. 81 miles away. So profile looks good at the moment. Barry says a proper Yorkshire lad. <laughs> well, I mean, why, why spread it out over three when you can do it for the price of one? I just need to make sure I married them all off at the same time. I just want to eat a meal in peace. That's all I ask. I have no idea how many years that's going to be before that happens. Uh, Jonathan, have you had to make any purely instrumental landings in zero visibility in this series yet? Yes, I think we've had a couple. We have had a couple where it's had to be auto land. Because the weather was cack. But, fly by wire absolutely nailed it, so... Nothing wrong with that. Just a couple of things to bring into the brief as well. We've got a couple of waypoints. Lutz and...
and uh, that's CJ457. Um, yeah, for anyone that's just joined, maybe perhaps a little bit late, I'll just go through this again. Uh, so we're going to do loot, CJ457, then we're going to go direct to uh, Collar, um, and that'll bring us in on the localizer. Loot speed 230 by... 457, I want to be green dot, leaving 457, I'm going to be flaps 1, then I'm going to get to flaps 2, as then we're uh, 80 miles out, 5,000 feet, and gently descending down to be 3,000 feet at 9.3 miles out on the localizer, as I believe the glide slope not to be working. If, of course, it does, it does work, then we shall, of course, use the approach mode. Uh, Lucas says there's all kinds of Milan radar on now. Ah, oh, that's frustrating, isn't it? Oh, man, traffic with uh, 15 Whiskey over Guiano. For the Guiana 2 mic arrival, runway 20 Palmero. Um, Christopher, you did North Holland last week, was it? Did I? I actually can't remember the last time I did. I think I may have planned for one, but when we got there, the weather was fine, so we, we brought her in manually. Uh, Dark Fury, Bill Bow. We did do a really bad approach. <laughs> <laughs> Bad approach, that's not right. Uh, it, a very low visibility approach, and it was a time before Autolands worked. And I went around the first time, because I couldn't see, I couldn't see Nafal. And I went around the second time, we just got there, to be fair, I think I broke some minimums, but I hadn't got time to divert and go somewhere else. Uh, Barry, you know it's real ops, but I always feel night flights... Uh, Waste max off flight simulator because there's all that wonderful scenery. Is. Barry, I do agree with you to some uh, extent. I love um, the scenery that uh, you obviously can see in the daytime. And sometimes I do change the time. So it, it has been known. But I know a lot of people also appreciate the daylight. Uh, sorry, I <laughs> appreciate the night flights that we get. Although, admittedly, <laughs> there's uh, not too much to see when uh, we're over the sea. Now, who's that bringing up the rear? Palermo traffic on line 423 Tango, passing flight level 190, currently 14 miles north of Giano. Speed 270 knots. Arrival in the Giano 2 mic arrival. Decent length uh, Friday night flight, this one. HD, where's the quiz question? You one chance to actually have a Friday night quiz question, and it's a Friday. <laughs> uh, Christian, you love the airports and uh, the lights at night. They feel real. Indeed. Uh, Mantoga, that's why you tend to do flights in the US in the evening. Yeah, that makes sense, obviously, because they're in real time. It's, it's daylight there, isn't it? Or, of course, Australia. We might have to sneak one of those in. We'll have to do an Australian flight one night. How's our profile doing? 45 miles to run. It's looking good. Uh, Danny, we are still on Unicom, that is correct. Oh, HD, you haven't been able to think of any that you haven't asked previously. Alright, I've got one random one for you. What's the maximum runway altitude for the A320? Answers in the chat.
and Palmero traffic up and four two three tango overhead Giano now beginning the arrival of the to runway two zero Giano two Mike. Okay, HD, I'm just going on the, the, the normal Airbus A320, not, not the Neo variant. Not that I think we ever have to concern ourselves with it uh, in Europe. Ooh, HD, that is a great question. And I feel like I should know the answer to this. Particularly as we did this the other day. In fact, was it yesterday we did this? I can't remember. I, anyway, I need to concentrate. Um, <laughs> yeah, seat belt signs on. So, landing checklist. Seat belt signs are on. Arrival brief is completed. Minimums are 450 set. Engine selection is normal. Flight bag is stowed. Okay, HD, I'm going to go first. I'm going to say 5,000 feet. And the only reason I, th I thought I know this was because the approach we did, was it yesterday? Into Warsaw? Was it Warsaw? I don't know. It was a very early capture of the ILS uh, with the controller that was a little bit flustered. And we captured it, and I well, had autopilot one and two on but it was still showing uh, cat one and then it turned obviously to cat three jewel i think it was five thousand uh little two five well, good evening welcome to is this your city oh fantastic glad we're flying uh, flying there uh, right, speed and I'll star. Do speed now. Two five zero, and we're going to get down to five thousand feet. <coughs> QNH is one zero one seven. Set the standby as well. Thrust idle over to Five thousand blue. Landing lights on. So still just monitoring this profile. We've got 4,000 feet to lose, and plenty of time to lose it. Once we hit 4,000 feet then, we're going to go uh, get a green dot up. And I am actually just watching, so there is an aircraft that's flying the full procedure here. Uh, HD, yes, we did do the approach checks. I've got a trigger for that one. Don't forget that one. Uh, Jens, no, someone did tell me that the altitude at the top isn't working correctly uh, because I can't see that, remember, on the stream. That's just a streaming overlay. I have, I have no idea what information that's churning out. So I'm happy now to just reduce that speed, VS1000. Uh, 
Uh, anyway, the answer to my question, the highest um, limitation for the A320 is uh, 9,200 feet. And I'm sure I saw two people get that right. Who's been Googling? It's a random bit of knowledge. I don't think there's any airports that the uh, A320 could potentially even service in Europe, is there? Actually, looking at the way he's circling around, I think we're going to be okay. Oh, good lord, who's that? Rome radar is on, 1242. Two. Oh, well, this just could change lots of things. Uh, my sim's frozen. Oh no, there we go. Oh, don't do that. 1242. Two. Hang on a minute, I'll contact you in a minute. I've got other things to concern myself with. Speed 230 knots as per the constraint. 124.2. We're on open descent now as well. Rome radar, good evening. Alpine 423. Tango on the Giorno 2. Mike arrival, runway 20. 143 Tango, good, e good evening. Radar contact, turn left, left heading 070. Man Maintain 4,000. Uh, maintaining 6,000. Left 0, 070, zero, send and maintain 6,000 for uh, Alpine 423 Tango. Descend and maintain 423 Tango, disregard. I see you 5,500. Maintaining 5,000 feet in this case. Maintain 5,000. Thank you, Alpine 423 Tango. Alpine, three, Alpine 351, Roma. Has the guy got the radio on in the background? We have a glide slope. We have a glide slope. So that's good. Easy to trick here Delta. Uh, see, report established, runway 25, number 2, becoming number 1. Is this guy uh, a sorry, football match or something? With there, 15 whiskey. Turn right, right, 185, sorry, 190 one degrees. Thank you, PM. ITO is identified. Feet, clear ILS approach, runway 25, you are number 3. Turn right heading 185 down to 3000, number 3 in line with that 15 whiskey. Right, so let's start slowing as well in a moment. I'm just tied to that flight plan up. <coughs> uh, I don't want nav, I want heading. Come on, there we are. Easy uh, 230 Delta established uh, ILS uh, 25. 25. Easy changing our runway arrival. Runway 25 clear to land. Clear to land runway 25, easy 230 Delta. I'll find the 146 post to confirm the runway back Yes, confirm runway. Right, new platform altitude 3,000 feet. And Alice Reese is 195. Echo Tango Mike Romeo. Echo Tango Mike Romeo, 216, Alpine 146, Fox Trotter. With their 113, sorry, with their 15 whisky, report established 25, number 2. Welcome, we'll confirm and establish number two with Airborne 5 Whiskey. And now by 423 Tango, confirm our arrival runway, please. Uh, you passed your message, sir? Can you confirm our arrival runway, please? Airborne 423 Tango. Yes, sir, we have uh, runway 25 in, in use for arrival uh, and for the moment. <laughs> Roger, Airborne 423 Tango. Right, okay, the missed approach is still the same. So, 
I've just pulled up a new chart. 109.5, 109.5. Romeo Alpha India is identified. We've just flown uh, away from that. If I, want, uh, I, I try to contact. Uh, I try to contact you, but uh, no response. Vabbè. One four one one four two three tango turn right one five zero. Right heading one five zero, I'll tango. The guy can't even get my call sign right, so easy one six two Roma. Right, right heading one five zero. Easy one six two, Roger. One, one six two, good evening, radar contact, could turn right, uh, sorry, turn left zero seven zero. Left zero seven zero, easy one six two. Thank you. Easy three eight nine golf. At least we can see where we're someone coming in now. Advise, uh, Alpine 351 uh, about our own center is online. Apologies, uh, EZ351 with you. Alpine 351. 351, good evening. No problem, sir. Turn left at 070 for sequence. Left 070 for sequence, EZ, uh, Alpine 351. With uh, 15 whiskey now established, room Alpine 25. Alpine 43 Tango, turn right, right 180, descend 3000 feet, clear ILS approach 25, report established. Descend altitude 3000, right turn 180, clear ILS runway 25, report established. Thrust, thank you for oh. Alpine 423 Tango. I'm reading him my FMAs, <laughs> that's no good. With 015 uh, whiskey confirmed established. Uh, Roger, we're established with our one whiskey. Thank you very much. Well, we in the one and zero one and not QNH one zero one seven. So, are we going to get? I think we Roger are going to get the ILS. So I did see that. So minimums are going to be five hundred. Three five one uh, heading uh, heading zero seven zero. Romeo Alpha India. Zero seven zero. Romeo Alpha, Alpha India. Alpha. Yeah, that's the correct one. Three eight nine golf for Roma. If I want, I see you with the heading at zero two zero, but uh, okay, to correct to zero seven zero due to separation. So I've now got lock blue Thank on you the. Thank very much. Can slow down that rate of descent. We don't don't need to go down that fast. Twenty four miles out, I've no glance up at the moment, so we've just armed the localizer. <coughs> Christian <laughs> read all <of> Stuart. <laughs> Good evening. Yeah, that was uh, that was interesting. Can you please uh, confirm the approach? For There's a glide slope. 351, uh, expect right, let's start slowing uh, down. 25, number uh, 3 on sequence now, becoming number 2. ILS 25, I might need to extend a little bit, apologies. I'll start. No problem, sir. Easy 162, expect ILS 25, number 4. Expecting ILS 25, uh, uh, easy 162. The wind as well from the uh, from the west is going to be easy, pushing easy, us easy, easy, ever so slightly drifting. Say Sean calling us. Uh, easy 23 Sierra Delta, we're clear of runway 25. 23 Sierra Delta, welcome to... Uh, Nomad piloting, that is fantastic news, well done. Uh, really great to hear. Via Mike and Romeo. 
Please ensure your cabin uh, two, is one, six, one, 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 Your tray table must be stowed. Good evening. Uh, 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 room is in sight. Easy three five one from from present. Uh, Lockstar. Right heading one five zero. Rubbish. Present heading one five zero. The toilets are no longer in service. Three five one. You're indicated the speed, please. Indicator two zero zero three five one. Mm, Roger. Easy, easy one six two turn right right one five zero reduce to two zero zero. Eighteen miles so slowing one, down now. Uh, we're well below the profile, zero zero. so loads of time now to roll that speed back. Lock is captured. Three eight nine golf. Three Good evening. Radar contact. Descend the five thousand feet. QNH one zero one seven. Turn left. Heading 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 zero seven zero. Uh, yeah, man, don't, get right. don't worry about the speed. We've got loads of time. I don't want to slow down too. Uh, I didn't want to slow down too much at uh, 20 miles out. <laughs> that would have been a very long approach. And there's another three aircraft behind me. Four two three Tango confirm established. And Alpine four two three Tango is established. Alpine 423 Tango, Roma? Yeah, I'm trying, you're not listening. Alpine 423 Tango, established runway 25. Always there, Wolf, I wish you'd have vacated. Alpine 423 Tango, radio check. He's gone offline. Oh, uh, we're on our own now, guys. Those on frequency, this is Alpine 423 Tango established. 12 miles runway 25. Appears ATC just gone offline. Flaps 1, speed checked. Flaps 1. Oh, it may be back online. And flaps two, speed checked. Flaps two, we're going to hold one at zero knots. Four two three tango, confirm establish. Alpine four two three tango, establish runway two five and ten miles. Thank you. One nine zero one eight knots, QNH one zero one zero one seven, runway two five clear to land. Clear to land, runway two five, Alpine four two three tango. Mr. Proch altitude is set, glide slope captured. With the airborne fire risk is vacated, requesting taxi to gates. <laughs> one fire risk, taxi to send the 219 and buy a mic and Romeo. Stand 219, buy a mic and Romeo. With the airborne fire risk. Oh, nothing's ever always straightforward, is it? Alpine uh, 351, turn uh, right, uh, right, 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 uh, 210, clear ILS. What has he got five on five in one the one background, five. this guy? My ears are bleeding. Clear ILS, uh, we will we'll report to establish 351. Okay. Alpine 162, uh, reduce speed to minimum speed approach. And Alpine 423 Tango, uh, sorry, there's a lot of feedback on your radio. Any chance you can solve that for us? Four two three tango, repass your message. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Alpine four two three tango. Lot of radio feedback. It's difficult to hear you. Thank you very much. We have uh, some problem with audio for Vatim today. It's, it's just it's just the second time I reboot immediately client audio for Vatim. I don't know why. And landing gear is down. Spoilers armed. Speed. 
think the cabin flaps mm, to me. Of this, but it's impossible for the moment. I presume. Well, I'm not sure if that's responsible for the TV. 423 Tango, Roma? Alpha 423 Tango, Roger, 4 mile final. Runway 25. Thank you. And flaps full. Landing checklist. Cabin is secured, go auto thrust speed, go on an altitude 3000 set. ECAM memo landing no blue. Roma. Okay, I have control now. Please go ahead. Uh, Alpine 351 Roma, could you hear me? Alpine 162 Roma. <laughs> Sounds like the end of War of the Worlds. <laughs> Come in, Pasadena. Come in, Pasadena. <laughs> Alpine 162, could you hear me? Oh, the wind's definitely favoured room 20. Two, can hear you? Yes, no, ju just to confirm, can, can you hear me? Today we have a big problem with audio for Vatsi, man. I don't know if, if, if the station hear me, could, can hear me. Sorry for that. 400. Roger, easy 162, uh, confirmed, can hear you, okay. Thank you very much. Back on the center line. The, the minimum speed approach, we have a slow traffic just in front of you and we can't intercept uh, the ILS for you, for the moment. Confirming minimum speed, EZ-162. Yes, we have uh, another uh, Alpine traffic, more slow uh, respect of you. 30. Can you... 20. Can you reduce speed to minimum if it's, if it's possible, just to, just to, just to avoid separation? Roger, easy 162. Alpine 389 Golf, green. turn right, heading 150. Reduce speed to reverse off. Or less. Alpine 389 Golf, turn right, heading 150, and confirm speed to 200 or less. Tell you what. Yes, sir. Just it just is quite off putting for you, for the noise two, in my headphones at the moment. No, no, not more of two to zero. Until the fasten seat outside has been switched on. Easy 162, I extend you. I extend you leg uh, just to confirm separ Please just to, to for separation from another traffic. Checking in the seat pocket, underneath the seat, and in the overhead lockers. Easy 162 confirmed. The yes, maintain present heading uh, just, just for separation, sir, I'm sorry. A smoking area. Roger, maintaining uh, present heading EZ-162. Yes. Our ground crew will help you complete your EasyJet journey. For the latest news, promotions, flight and destination information, check out our official Facebook page, Twitter or EasyJet app. Shall we just go and park up? Four two three Tango taxi to gate two zero seven via Mike and Romeo. Gate two zero seven via Mike and Romeo. Up on two four two three Tango. No, no. Uh, got to see the landing twice. <laughs> one from the parking spot facing the runway, and then over the feed. Which one looked better? Easy 162, turn right to 240. Right, 240, easy 162. Alpine 351, maintain this speed till it's possible. So this is maintain Romeo, and where are we going? 207, 207. Alpine 162, maintain this speed till it's possible. Ah, first on the left towards the building, so follow Romeo all the way in. Three. 
Easy. One, six, I, uh, do you know what? Screw that. My head hurts after listening to that. Um, so, I, uh, I absolutely love this freeware scenery. Great job to the developer who did, uh, who did this. So we're going to continue on here, bearing around left, following Romeo. We should see Papa 4 and then gate sta uh, the stand 207 is, uh, is in front of us. Christopher Shore, have you not seen the scenery before? It's, uh, it's beautiful. Really, really good. Uh, yeah, Lilo25, this is freeware, flightsim.to. Fantastic uh, scenery. And again, for freeware, it's, uh, well, it's even better, isn't it? I don't need the taxi lights to be able to uh, see my way around. So let's try and stop this on the 320 mark. No marshaller, sadly. That'll do. Okay, and parking brakes set. Shutting down engine one and two. Seatbelt signs, lights, so I can see. Oh, that's much better. Um, oh, APU. Yeah, I'm going to blame the noise of my headphones. We've now got a dark cockpit. <laughs> I mean, all the lights have also gone out in the back, and I've just scared the crap out of all the passengers. Oh, well, what a way to end the stream. Oh, Rotofib, thank you so much for coming up to uh, joining us in the Captain's Club. Rotofib, really, really kind of you. And uh, thank you so much for your uh, for your support there. Uh, if you're on our Discord server, please do uh, get in touch. Make sure we gave you uh, access to the VIP room as well. So really do appreciate your support there, uh, Rotofib. And... Um, Barry, oh <laughs> Barry, thank you so much for your uh, two pound donation there, Barry. Says here you go, you deserve it after that. <laughs> it was um, I, I, that was painful, honestly. Can anyone speak Spanish? I uh, I I want to know the uh, uh, <coughs> I want to know what was going on with the background with the ATC because that was awful. <laughs> uh, Rotafib, nice way to reset the McDo, yeah. <laughs> Um, but uh, very quickly, let me just show you outside the uh, the freeware airport from uh, flightzim.to. This is uh, this is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Um, and do you know what? Let me just if we'd arrived here in the daytime, I am just going to wind the camera up uh, the time back. Well, here we go. If we'd arrived here, in the, look at that. This is what you've actually got to play with. So. Gorgeous freeware scenery, um, and really, really nice. Um, Peter, oh, that Peter, thank you so much for your uh, for your super chat. Really, really kind, Peter. Very much uh, appreciated, and I hope everyone's going to have a really good weekend as as well. As you know, I don't stream on a Saturday, so um, hopefully, I will be back with you on Sunday night for our. Um, our I-95 flight as we continue down. We're edging ever closer and closer to uh, to Florida, aren't we? So looking forward to seeing some of you on that stream as well. Thank you so much to everyone who's flown with us today. Thank you so much to those of you who have donated and contributed to the stream as well. It was a, uh, a chaotic arrival, but uh, there we go. He sounds like uh, the vaccine controller sounds like he was having a good time anyway with uh, whatever was going on in the background. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope you all have a really great weekend. And uh, that's not the bloody Atlantic HD. <laughs> I'm going to leave that up there. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. I hope you've enjoyed that. I look forward to seeing you all again on the next one very soon. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.